Dear viewer, welcome to my moon base. Do you like it? I hope that you do. I've spent a lot of time and effort trying to figure out how to best colonize this particular corner of Lunar Maria. The lunar surface is a harsh environment that requires its own specific engineering challenges. Challenges that I must say were already thought about and designed around more than 60 years ago. Today, we discuss Project Horizon, the US Army's top secret plan to put a base on the moon and defend it with boom boom sticks. Now entering the facility. On October 4th, 1957, the Soviet Union successfully launched the Sputnik satellite, suddenly shocking the West in the United States by both establishing and pulling ahead in a space race. The United States now had a very real worry that they would come in second in this race to the next great milestone, establishing a presence on the moon. And so, in 1959, the US Army responded with this, Project Horizon, a complete and detailed report on how to create and maintain an outpost on the moon. Weren't you already on the moon by then? No, I wasn't on the moon in the 50s. I haven't been frozen between then and now. I'm not Captain America. Though I do miss Peggy. The now declassified multi-volume report spans hundreds of pages. It gives specific and technical recommendations for everything from launch and landing sites on Earth to the dimensions of subterranean living quarters to the costs of nuclear-powered Saturn rockets. If you're a space nerd, it's a fascinating and educational read with some gorgeous artist renditions. I'll put a link to it in the comments if you want to peruse it yourself. Project Horizon is especially interesting because time was of the essence. It represents what the United States Army believed it could do with 60s technology, and it was quite a lot. Quote, Project Horizon represents the earliest feasible capability for the U.S. to establish a lunar outpost. By its implementation, the United States can establish an operational lunar outpost by late 1966. End quote. Everything in these reports in just six years would surely put the Soviets on the back foot. Now, obviously, there's a lot we could go through in over 400 pages of report, but we don't have time to do that today. So instead, we're going to focus on something that, unlike actually stepping on lunar regolith, never came to pass. And that's battling Soviets on the moon. Sounds like those old sci-fi shows. Yeah, you got that right, Aria. Three words. Handheld shotgun sticks. Yeah. Today's video is sponsored by Delete Me. Gamers, I'm award-winning science educator and Jason Fomoa, Kyle Hill. You know, I get on stage here in front of millions at the facility and <laughs> bare my soul, but I'm actually a pretty private person. How old am I? How tall do I say I am in my Tinder profile? What's my dog's name? Do I even have a dog? I don't want to tell you any of these things. Point being, living online, that can be difficult. That's why I rely on the sponsor of today's video, Delete Me. Delete Me is a service that makes it quick, easy, and safe to remove your personal data online. Just submit your personal information for removal from data broker sites, and then Delete Me experts find and remove your personal information regularly all year long. More than 20% of the Fortune 500, along with dozens of government agencies and nonprofits, rely on Delete Me to keep their information private. Just look at how much of my information Delete Me found and then removed from the clutches of the information monetizing, attention siphoning doomsday machine that is the internet. If you want to keep your personal data online just that, personal, go to this URL or click the link down in the description and use the offer code all together, all caps, no cap fam, KYLE20OFF for 20% off any consumer plan at Delete Me. You're welcome. Kyle. 20 off one word when you want to stay personal online just say it <sniffs> delete me the two biggest factors that affect weapon systems on earth are gravity and drag projectiles on earth have the range that they do because they'll be eventually pulled to the ground by gravity they have the shape that they do because they have to push through certain mediums with density like air the moon is different in these two factors. It only has one-sixth the gravity of Earth, changing the range, and it has effectively no atmosphere, changing drag to essentially zero. Add in the fact that anyone in a moon war will be in a big, bulky, pressurized suit, 
and suddenly you have a battlefield where some weapons won't work at all. Others will work a lot better. I'm moon dancing. That's how you dance on the moon. Consider a simple pistol on the moon. Its ammunition may already contain the oxygen it needs to ignite, but the army points out that the pistol's pin-firing mechanism might not work consistently in 1 6th G. When you fire the pistol, if you can, the expanding gases will not be halted by any atmosphere, making each pull of the trigger slightly more dangerous to the user. The recoil while firing will be substantially higher in a low-gravity vacuum, and that much more difficult to control with ungainly astronaut gloves. And good luck aiming the pistol in the first place. Without air to get in the way and with reduced gravity, bullets and other projectiles like mortars will fly with substantially extended ballistic arcs, not anywhere near like you're used to on Earth. Finally, inside the large pressurized suits that you'd need on the moon, you can forget about using gun sights without modification that takes into account your helmet and Michelin Man-like arms. It wouldn't be all downside though, some weapons would work a lot better on the moon. If you're fighting a moon war against moon soldiers, then presumably they're in pressurized suits. So to take them out of combat, you just have to poke a hole in those suits, and the more holes the better. A human in a vacuum will pass out and be unable to fight, therefore, in under 90 seconds. We know that because we've put chimpanzees and dogs in vacuum chambers, but we're not going to go through that because it's kind of depressing. So on the moon, you would want some kind of weapon that you don't have to aim, that uses hole poking technology, and that creates a lot of hole pokers all at once that travel extreme distances in the moon environment. That's why Project Horizon suggested using fragmentation weapons above all else, like grenades, grenade launchers, and claymore mines. Heck, the US Army figured that having a claymore mine on a stick would be more effective than a pistol on the moon. And so that's exactly what they suggested using, mine on a stick. Imagine that you're one of the dozen or so engineers, doctors, and scientists living on the U.S. Army's moon base in 1966. Command and control on Earth warns you of invading lunar Soviets. How do you defend yourself? Project Horizon first prioritizes perimeter defense with fragmentation weapons like mines. They can be detonated remotely, don't need aiming, and have hugely extended kill radii in vacuum. If the lunatics get through that, you might have to take matters into your own hands. Literally. Take your specially designed landmine on a stick and frag some faces. Remember, whether you're fighting people in spacesuits or lunar vehicles, you don't actually have to destroy them. You just have to depressurize them, and vacuum will do the rest. What do you do with the bodies? Oh, you just let the bodies uh, freeze all the way through in the shadows on, on the craters in, in the moon and then you, and you vibrate the bodies and shake your drums until they're frozen meat dust and then you use that to grow your crops. Oh, really? I mean, I, I don't know, that's what I would do. While fragmentary weapons seemed the cheapest and simplest option for moon defense at the time, the U.S. Army did consider everything at their disposal. But only directional mines and fragments came out as the clear winners. That is, unless you could develop a death ray. But small, powerful laser beams weren't invented yet, so no pew-pew on the moon moon in the 60s. Sag. Regular handheld weapons could still work on the moon, but they'd have to be extensively modified, which Project Horizon figured would take at least a couple years, which they didn't have, so they didn't consider them as highly as fragmentation weapons. Still though, they did consider how you would change a normal pistol for moon war, and they figured they'd be more like handheld shotguns. Just look at how the projectiles themselves also change, instead of these bullets that are stabilized and aerodynamic, you get projectiles that are just like ball bearings for shotguns and pokey, holy spacesuit kind of projectiles. You don't need the same kind of stuff on Earth that you need on the moon. Unless, of course, moon's haunted. What? I said, moon's haunted. Now, obviously, Project Horizon never came to pass. Just for the materials for the base alone, it would have required at least one fully loaded Saturn V rocket launch every week for half a decade. 
This represents a huge expenditure for the US government at the time and therefore a huge political ask. In any case, the project became officially impossible in 1967 when the United States signed the Outer Space Treaty, which officially barred military operations on the moon and other celestial bodies. But today we have technology that far outstrips anything that the US military was thinking about in Project Horizon. So whether or not it's still your best defense to bring a boomstick to the moon, that's an open question. What would you defend yourself with on the moon? Until next time. Astronaut lizards? Think about it. Laser turrets. Manned by genetically enhanced wasps. Oh, beat that. Soviets? Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky lab coat, if you want videos early, access to our private Discord, and members only live streams once a month with me, ho ho, go to patreon.com slash kylehill, join us today. And hey, if you support us just enough, get your name on Aria in every single video. <laughs> Look at how many people want that. <laughs> There's. As it goes, there's no way. How can I pass the time? What I also like about Project Horizon is their acknowledgement of the power of nuclear power. Even back in the 50s and 60s, all of these Saturn V rockets, everything that was gonna power the outpost on the moon was going to be nuclear. Why? Because pound for pound, watt for watt, kilogram for kilogram, which matters a lot when you're launching stuff up out of a gravity well, nothing beats the energy density of nuclear reactions we would have had a nuclear-powered base on the moon. Enough said. How cool is that? Nuke gets it done. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Remember that? That show had an astronaut in it. <laughs>